Hello and thanks for joining us for another edition of Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. In this episode, we're focused on super savings with simple things you can do to cut costs from prescriptions to college tuition. But first, stretching your grocery budget. Food prices have increased more than 11% in just one year. So how can you make your groceries last longer and make the most of what you already have? Here are some easy tips to help you save money in the long run. The easy thing we can do right now, first of all, check your refrigerators. Yes. What are we looking for? First step, you want to check the fridge temp. Okay. So the USDA oh, the temperature. Says okay. 40 degrees is what they recommend, but a lot of food experts say keep it even lower, between 35 and 38 degrees. And how would you know? Well, if you don't have one of those built-in thermometers, you yeah. can get one. And what I would say is check it every day and see it in different regions so you know, is it the top of my fridge cooler, is the bottom, but 35 to 38, it will help inhibit the growth of bacteria like okay. Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, and it will keep your food fresher. The other thing is make sure your fridge is not too crowded and that it's not too empty because that makes it not as efficient. And the freezer? Freezer is zero degrees. Zero. And one sign there is if you have too much frost buildup, that means your fridge or your freezer is too cold. Really? Yes. And if you keep it too cold, you're going to lose moisture and flavor from your food. So zero degrees is the recommendation. Okay. All right. You have a few tricks to prevent some of the food we have in the fridge from spoiling. Yes. Let's start with greens. Moisture is the enemy of your greens. Oh. That's what causes it to wilt. So after you bring your greens home, you want to store them in an airtight container and just throw a paper towel in there. I do this. This is it. Really works. Yeah, it and I will fresh admit, longer. like even in the bag salad, you just. Yes. Stick a paper towel in there. there. Perfect. That's Very good. good. All right, what about mushrooms? Mushrooms. Okay, so they sell them with plastic. You yeah. want to rip that plastic off right away. You can either keep it in a cardboard box or, if you want to, keep it in a um, little really? paper bag. This will keep your mushrooms fresh longer. You can actually even keep them out of the fridge if you want in just a cool, dry, dark place. Really? Yes, but don't keep the moisture in. That is what will cause your mushrooms to I was about to say, and I've done that, but and then I won't get plastic, to use so them. It's confusing. They're yeah. like mushy by the time I get to exactly. them. Exactly. All right, last but not least, let's do butter. Yes. Okay, so this is really interesting. If you you don't eat your cheese quickly. Mm -hmm. You can spread butter on the cut side of the cheese to keep that fresher. And the other key is Ooh. to wrap your cheese in wax paper before you put it into an airtight bag. Look, we're using Ziplocs, but I like to use those resealable, uh, reusable yes, silicone bags. Yes. Those are fine too. The key is just keeping the air out of everything. Is that what the butter does to the, the end of the The butter will just keep the cheese fresher longer on the oh. cut end. Okay. Yeah. So Vic, these are two items that you actually, I, I've never thought about freezing nuts mm -hmm. or herbs, but but you maintain that's a way to make them last longer. Craig, you're going to hear it here first. Yeah. Freeze your nuts. Freeze your nuts. Never would think to do that, but yes, nuts have a very high oil content. They can go rancid within two to four weeks, and they're expensive, so that's the key. You wouldn't think it, but freeze your nuts. <laughs> this may be my last time on TV with you, Craig. Um, the other thing is... <laughs> Chop up your herbs. This is another thing a lot of people don't think about. Fresh herbs are so expensive. Yeah. So you chop them up after you've washed them, patted them dry, chop them up, and pre-portion them. Spread them on a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer, then you can dump them all into a bag. So you've got here parsley, rosemary, sage. It works with frozen all kinds of herbs. Frozen herbs, frozen nuts. Yeah. Let's come over here. To, so these are items that you maintain that you can actually keep on the counter yes. or somewhere room temperature. Yes, absolutely. So with tomatoes, I never knew this, but if you keep your tomatoes stem side down, that uh -huh. actually helps them ripen in the right way. And oh. then the bottoms don't get mushy from the weight of the tomatoes, okay. so they don't go bad as long. And also keep them out room temperature, cool, dark place. The only time you put tomatoes in the fridge is after you've cut them and you wrap them in plastic or put them in a container so that you prevent the growth of bacteria. Okay. Okay. And then when it comes to fruit, so check your fruit often. See this like that little pear doesn't guy look here. good. That's a yes. bad looking pear. This will cause everything else to slowly go oh. bad. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Your yep. fruit bowl, you know, fairly frequently. So spoiled fruits can spread? It's Absolutely. Because it's releasing it. all this gas and then it'll spread to everything oh. else. Oh. I didn't know this either. So these two, which we always store together, yeah. this will cause, onions will cause your potatoes to go bad sooner. So potatoes love apples. Potatoes and apples. Apples will keep your potatoes from growing those like sprouts and yeah. size. That's fine though. That's not, doesn't make them inedible. You just cut them out if you want. They just don't look great. So kind of people freak out, but don't waste your potatoes. You can eat them even after they've You're sprouted. blowing our minds, Vicki. Yes, uh, speaking of onions, Vicki, yeah. we appear to have <laughs> onions in a pair of pantyhose. Yes. Okay. So this is a trick that I thought nobody's was just, doing that thing. Like, <laughs> no, no, nobody's doing that. I know because pantyhose is not that cheap actually, but I was going to say, yeah, I don't know about that. If you want your onions to last a month, 
months and months and months. People swear by this technique. So you get a pair of pantyhose and you separate them with a knot. With a knot, yeah. This helps to keep them dry. It okay. helps to keep the air circulating and it helps to keep your onions around for a long time. So I don't know where you find the space to do it, but if, if let's say you harvest your own onions. And you there is not a single months, person in America. <laughs> with all that space you have, not by the way, person. to hang your onions with a pair of pantyhose, you should also be hanging other it things, is. right? Like bananas? It works. It works. Okay, so bananas? Jacob. Craig's freezing his nuts, you're gonna hang your bananas, okay? okay. Hanging your bananas, it keeps them from bruising. Ah. And then also, <laughs> ethylene okay. gas is released from the stem, so if you wrap it in plastic, that is going to keep your bananas fresher longer. Vicky, okay? you are an angel. Okay, yeah. so what else do we have here? Some the herbs. other thing you wanna hang, are your herbs. You can actually hang fresh herbs. Not only do they smell good around your kitchen, yeah. but this will keep them fresh longer because you're giving air circulation you, to so them. So they don't dry out. Yeah, well, actually, they will dry out, but that's okay. Okay, all right, fine. Yeah. Uh, and finally, deli meats. Yes. And we've got a piece of raw salmon here. What do we do with oh these? Oh, my gosh. The key with meats is just to remember to keep okay. them max three to five days in an airtight container, whether you get them fresh from the deli or you get them prepackaged. So that is the key. And keep them in the coldest spot in your fridge. And then with fish, one to two days from getting them home, you either use them or freeze those fish fillets. Spread them out on a single layer, pat them dry, and keep them uh, on ice packs if you mm -hmm. can, if your fridge isn't cold enough. Oh, We have learned helpful. a lot. Vicky yeah. went with the greatest segment of all time. I yeah. mean, really? And it's not just groceries. Prescription costs are rising, too. In 2021, nearly a quarter of Americans had to forego a prescription because of the price. NBC's senior business analyst Stephanie Rule recently shared how you can maximize your savings at the farm without sacrificing your health. So let's start with one of my favorites, flexible spending account. Mm -hmm. Tons of us have it. It's an employer-based program where you can put money aside pre-tax, amazing, mm -hmm. and spend it only on things for medical expenses. And that's not just your, your prescriptions. It's not just your co-pays. It's things like sunscreen. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Diapers, the website, correct, go to the website, yeah. lots of things that you might not realize. Now let's stack discounts. You might be thinking, what discounts? There's coupons. Ask your doctor. Explain your situation. And there are programs out there. And my favorite, Simply ask your doctor, mm -hmm. is there a generic version? Oftentimes, your doctors aren't thinking about it, but the drugs they're prescribing, there's a generic. Mm -hmm. Take it. Take Cost it. much less. So there, are, we've seen the commercials. There are a lot of companies that offer ways to save you money, but how can you vet those and make sure you're signing up for the right thing? It, it is confusing, so let's start with your doctor. Let's start with your health care provider, and if you are really struggling, you should explain that to them because mm -hmm. there are state programs, and you want to find out, are you eligible? I love going to GoodRx.com, the website, okay. and comparison shop. Find out all the things you need to buy and just price check. And then lastly, check with your pharmacy. Some of the big national grocery stores, national pharmacy chains, mm -hmm. have discount programs, but oh. also try your local. I love shopping at my local pharmacy. Chances are those pharmacists know you best. Mm -hmm. They have lower overhead. They might be able to get you deals. Please ask. That's great. So, so Steph, where does your insurance go? kick into this okay mine usually never covers anything <laughs> but you got to ask right mm -hmm. first go to your insurer's website and check their list of drugs and check it all the time because it changes regularly next what are your out-of-pocket costs mm -hmm. right you might say there's a drug i need it's not covered by insurance it might not be super expensive don't assume that it is right. find out what you need ask your pharmacist this is the tricky one right yes oh it's covered what is your deductible uh, we always forget yeah. about the deductible yeah. and then you go to the doctor you go to the pharmacist oh well you haven't hit your 250 yet oh. that's really really important options? and then again options is there a generic option I, we often forget to ask you must always ask and if you've got insurance can it combine with like the good rx coupon there's things? a very good chance you can stack them Call your insurance company and find out. They're not going to offer that information, sure. <laughs> but if you call, it's yeah. out there. Steph, what about other medical expenses? How, how can you negotiate those? Okay, check your bill, right? E even just think about going to the doctor. And most people never do that. Okay, They'll... check it. Yeah. If you make mistakes, they make mistakes. Yep. And you might also be like, I'm sorry, what are you giving me a test for? All these things cost. And remember, everything is negotiable. Get on the phone with your health care provider. Talk to your pharmacist and say, is there another program? Yeah. Is there? And the last thing, a payment plan, right? You might not be able to pay that whole bill right at once, but they might be able to put you on a program where you pay over the next few months, and they'll just spread it out.
Ask. Pick up the phone. Ask, ask yeah. your question. That's my Never takeaway. hurt. Making ask. a phone ask. call goes a long way yeah. mm-hmm. when you actually talk to another human being. Stephanie, thank you, thank you so much. You know what happens when you assume. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Al? <It may. laughs> Thanks, Steph. Up next, tips and tricks to help you start saving for your kid's college fund today. And later, buying and selling on online marketplaces. How to stay safe and avoid getting ripped off. That's all ahead on Consumer Confidential. We're back with Consumer Confidential. For many families, college can feel out of reach. A recent Nerd Wallet survey showed 20% of parents with kids under the age of 18 have not started saving. Here's what you can do right now to help bring down the price tag. Let's talk about starting early and yeah. saving. Okay. What are the best ways? So the first thing you may have heard of is called a 529 plan. And yes. a lot of people think, okay, this is a college savings plan. And what it is, it's a vehicle designed to help you get to maximum return on your investment. By the time your child is 18, you can use it towards designated college um, expenses. But what a lot of folks don't know, yeah. you can actually use it to pay for K-12 through tuition oh. as well. There are these apprenticeship programs that are becoming really popular, Craig, where you learn a trade, you learn a craft, you learn how to be an engineer, you're guaranteed a job at the end of that year of training. You can use your 529 savings for that. Oh, wow. These are tax-deferred, tax-beneficial mm-hmm. uh, money savings here. And then finally, you can even use that money to pay off student loans. So it's not just for college anymore. You also maintain that, that the Roth IRA account. Yes. That's oftentimes associated with retirement. Totally. It can be used for college expenses as well? So you're putting after-tax dollars into a Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. It is not being taxed while it's in there. It's growing tax-deferred. And then if you transfer that money into an educational uh, a payment, yeah. then there are no penalties. So you can actually, if you have a Roth IRA, consider putting some of that money towards college payments as well. All right. What if you are already on a a tight budget to begin with, Vic, and you don't really have a lot of money to put into a 529, much less a Roth IRA? Let's take the stigma away from giving money as a gift for those holidays when grandparents say, oh, what can I get Timmy for his birthday or for Christmas? Put some money towards the 529 plan. Here's the number. U.S. News & World Report says right now the average tuition for a public four-year university, $10,400 per year. If it's a private school, that average goes up to $40,000 a year. So it's never too early to start contributing to that. How many Polly Pockets does the kid need, right? Right. This is money that teaches them the value of education, the value of saving, and gets them to the future. And what I love about this and what people may not realize, it's not just for your kids. Say Timmy doesn't want to go to college later on. You can transfer that money to siblings, Mm. step siblings, in-laws, foster kids, adopted kids, cousins, nieces, and nephews. So there's a lot you can do with those 529 savings. Okay. Vicki, Vicki, come to me. All right. So there are kids who are in high school, and there are things they can be doing right now. I had no idea. This is something called dual enrollment. You could take college classes outside of high school? Yeah, there are a lot of state-run programs called dual enrollment. That means that you're in high school, but you're taking some community college courses, earning credits toward a degree, which saves you time and money. Sometimes if you take enough courses in conjunction with your high school and the community college, you get, it's something called early college. You graduate from high school, but you have an associate's degree in college. So that is very doable, but you do want to check with your state because every state does it a little bit differently, but that is Mm -hmm. a fantastic program. If you're in high school right now, do it. A lot of kids take AP courses and that can also help you when it comes to college. Advanced placement courses, as long as you score a three, four, or five when it comes test time, those count as college credit. That's thousands of dollars. If you take three AP courses, do pretty well, your college accepts those. You could cut down a semester of college classes at that tuition by the time you graduate your senior year. You definitely want to talk to the college, though, first, because you want to make sure any course that you take actually counts towards college credit. a lot when you think about it. It's a lot of money, absolutely. You're saving money. That's great. Okay, let's come down here. By the way, it's a lot for college, high school kids, too, because they're already doing high school. You're like, and go to community college and take AP, but it is going to save you money at the end. It's going to save you money and time, and if you take the community college course, sometimes you can get out of taking the high school course. So, oh, it's not like double. Right, not double doing. Okay, let's talk about course sharing. Okay, course sharing is a similar Mm state-run type program. Yep where you are taking, um, you're already at actually a four-year university, Got it. but you're taking some of the courses, not at that university, at the elevated tuition, you're taking them at the community college and applying them to your four-year degree. So you can, those, those credits will transfer? Yes. 
But oh. you want to check first always with the registrar of the admissions office. The other thing is because of the pandemic, there are so many more online courses now. So you can take online courses from different places and apply those credits to your four-year degree. Again, always check in advance, but that was a real silver lining of the pandemic. They made education more accessible to more people in different geographic locations, and now that means more money back in your pocket and yeah. less time at good. your four-year school. All good. Yeah. Those are great right. tips, right? Still to come, important safety measures to consider before selling or buying from an online marketplace. Plus, tipping point. It seems more businesses and services are asking for a tip. I'll tell you the do's and don'ts so you're not shortchanged on service. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Consumer Confidential. Secondhand goods have grown in popularity, especially as people look to save money, with consumers now turning to online marketplaces like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace to buy and sell items. But there are some important safety measures to consider first to ensure you have a smooth transaction. Found this couch on Facebook Marketplace. Re-commerce is booming. One person's trash, not only another one's treasure, but also a way to save money. I bought so many amazing things on Craigslist throughout the years, like couches, light fixtures. In 2021, a record 272 million Americans bought or sold secondhand goods, roughly the number of people who own a smartphone. Online searches for used cars, clothes, and electronics have all increased in the past six months. While it's ideal to get things sent or delivered, sometimes an in-person exchange is required, which can be dangerous. In Houston, police say a man robbed at gunpoint during a meetup to sell his car. In New York City, a police officer gunned down buying a used car. In Cincinnati, a woman arrested after stealing $15,000 at a meetup, according to police. Oh my God, what did I just do? I just lost all my life savings. So whether you are buying or selling, there are some important tips you want to follow to make sure that you are safe. With me now is Mike Sapraconi. He's a former NYPD detective and a global security expert. Mike, thanks for joining. So we are here now at a buy, sell, safe exchange zone. What exactly is this place? It's a police station. It's open 24 hours a day. It has surveillance. It's the perfect place for you to come to buy or sell something from a stranger. Police stations around the country have established safe exchange zones like this one in Yonkers, New York. And it's safe because there are police officers coming and going. All the time. There's always going to be patrol cars, officers coming on duty, going off duty, and you got the cameras and the lights. Really a good place. So, Mike, you choose a location to meet up. What should you do when you get there? If you're driving and you get there, you should make sure your car doesn't get boxed in so that you're in a situation where you can't get out if you had to get out. If you arrive first, be aware of your surroundings and look for red flags. If somebody comes with no license plates on the car, there's a group of people in the car. If there's blacked out windows, these are all red flags that you should know about that should make you think twice. Always go with your gut. Be vigilant. You don't want to become a victim. Bring a friend with you and make sure loved ones know where you are. Try to meet during daylight hours. So, Mike, let's talk about the actual exchange of goods and money. What do we need to know to stay safe? Well, let's make sure the product works, okay? We should always do that before we exchange any money. And never bring a lot of cash with you. Bring what you need to pay for that item. Mike suggests getting a certified or cashier's check from a bank. But secondhand shopping safety starts before you even make the purchase. Yonkers Police Chief Joseph Monaco encourages shoppers to be aware. What's your public safety message to folks? I would say do your research. Try and find out who you're selling uh, or, or dealing with online or who you're purchasing from. These transactions can be safe. People do them all the time. But you, you got to have your guard up, right? Absolutely. It's 2023. People don't necessarily walk into a store anymore and uh, hand their money over a counter. Safety first when buying secondhand. Popular sites like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist have safety tips for users on their platforms. For example, Facebook Marketplace has a tool to create a meetup plan and you can share it with your friends and family so they know where you are or just bring someone with you if that helps you feel safer. You can also call your local police station and ask if they'll monitor the exchanges in a precinct or in a public space. And also there are websites like safetradestations.com or safetradespots.com to search for areas that people have used before. All right, coming up, to tip or not to tip, more businesses are asking consumers to pony up extra money. We're going to tell you how to navigate tipping culture without sacrificing service. That is next when Consumer Confidential returns. While tipping may have originated as a way to reward good service, it has now become part of many industries. So how much should you tip and when is it okay to skip? Here's a step-by-step -step guide to help you navigate tipping culture. Tipping 
you know, it used to be uh, you do a good job, you know, yeah. or you know, you go to a nice restaurant. You're it's a 15, 20 percent. Right. Now it does seem like there is this expectation that no matter where you go or what service is performed, you should be tipping. How did we get here? It is really contributing to a tipping fatigue in our society. Look, American culture, we are a very generous yes. people. Tipping is part of the norm, but there's a real debate going on right now, especially among American service workers who look at their counterparts in Europe and they don't depend as much on tips. And it's because people are saying, you're not paying us a living wage. Yep. Restaurant servers make as little as $4 an hour, and they're expected to make up the rest in, in tips, tips, which is supported by everyone else. So there's a conversation happening about, should employers pay more so that people aren't so dependent on mm -hmm. their tips? Mm -hmm. The thing is, the pandemic, that made us even more generous. Yes. Uh, Creditcards.com says we tipped an average of $1.24 more per mm, service during the pandemic yeah. because we were so grateful to those grocery deliveries, yeah. those mm -hmm food deliveries, mm -hmm. but now we're kind of contracting <laughs> and we're actually tipping less than we did in 2019. In wow. fact, the number of people polled said uh, that uh, the times that they always tip at a sit-down restaurant is 73% now compared to 77% back That's in 2019. Not, what? That's not good. Part of the tipping fatigue, when you are standing in line and someone is just going to hand you a bagel yes. and mm -hmm. then they turn they that turn little the screen thing. around and it says no they don't tip. even make eye 15, contact 20, with you. 20, 25%. Yes. And there's a long line of people behind you and you just feel like, I got to tip something. That kind of makes people less likely to tip in other places. Right. So there's a debate about that too. Like when do you have to tip? There are services we've always tipped for, I yes. feel like, but how do we know how much exactly to tip for say getting your hair done or services like that? Yeah, the best rule of thumb when it comes to tipping, obviously tip what you can, but there are some expected standards. Pre-tax tipping, when you go to a restaurant, 20% is mm -hmm. pretty much the expectation for good service. There was a great article written by a former server in Food and Wine magazine and they said, you know, even when they've had the most cringiest experience, they still tip 10%. Mm -hmm. The only times they say you can get away with zero is if the server it t absolutely ignores you um you know it's or, or does something terribly racist or offensive to you that's mm -hmm. the only time where they feel like it's acceptable mm -hmm. to go down to zero but beauty services 20 percent delivery services this one's interesting because Let's say you order a meal that is a little right. more expensive from Uber Eats. Right. You're going to be tipping a percentage of whatever that cost right. is, even though that meal might be literally lighter. the same effort lighter <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. as a cheaper a delivery. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to look at the bill and decide what mm -hmm. do I think is fair for that. When it comes to hotels, I don't know, you tip the yes. housekeeping each yes. night, yes. right? Yes, exactly. So you know, I always kids. thought it was at least yeah. 10 yeah, ten dollars a night, but yeah. actually some of the etiquette experts say anywhere from 2 to $15, depending okay. on how many nights. But you're supposed to tip every night because there are different people that sure, come into yeah. oh, oh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. 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 it's different. They oh. rotate different. through. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Just to follow okay. up really quickly, Vic, because you just said something. A lot of times people on a receipt will see like a service charge. Yes. Or and I think a lot of people wonder, okay, well, is that the tip? Am, so, am I tipping there with the service charge? Yeah. So for a while, you would see this service surcharge or a COVID surcharge. In California, they do a health insurance surcharge. Mm -hmm. So surcharges are different from tips. Yeah. And if you have a question about Just it, ask you should ask. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Usually when there are groups of six or more, they will add oh, they an automatic add it automatically. of 18%. But sometimes that extra service charge, it depends on the restaurant. So what you should ask. What about the gray areas like you know, a car wash uh, where you've got multiple people doing it? Or, or uh, to Dylan's point, where you're just picking up coffee. I know. So this is where the etiquette experts at emilypost.com say it's okay to avoid the guilt tip. Don't mm -hmm. tip if you don't feel like it was a personal service interaction. I would say at Car Wash, they're actually really doing something yeah. for you and it yeah. is customary to tip. Sometimes they have the big tip jar right. so you can give yep. it to everybody yes. and they usually pool their, their tips together. So with the gray area, the movers is another one. Mm -hmm. You're already paying hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for a big move. Yeah. But, but not it, to those folks who are right. bringing the stuff exactly. off the truck. Guys, they're working yeah. a 12 hour working. day. So yeah. if it, you don't don't have the cash to tip them forty to fifty dollars each. Then consider buying sandwiches or pizza yeah, right, and drinks for right. everybody for the day. You don't always have to tip in money. Okay. Do what you can. Right. Yeah, Do I what will you say. Can. Sue Simmons, one of our uh, legendary yeah. anchors here in New York, said, it, "Folks like us, there's a celebrity tax, and so you have mm. to tip." 30%. Now, the difference, so the sure difference with that Al. is if you serve Al, you're going to get a 50% <laughs> tip. You serve one of us, you, we can probably afford 25%. No, he's, ve <laughs> he's very generous, and so are you. <laughs> Thank you. Vicky, that's a great right. tip. Yeah, Thank yeah you. good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Keep in mind, many service workers are dependent on the tips they receive to make ends meet. While it was once customary to tip after service is complete, some workers are taking into account whether or not someone tipped them up front that could impact the quality of your service.
All right, well, that is our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.